such a privilege again to be with you and just to share some word with you as the Oxidale family. We are in a season where we spend time in the word and going a bit deeper into how we work with the word. And that's the topic of my, my talk with you today is living with the word. Uh, last week we had a look at how to live from the Word, uh, how to live from who you are in Christ. And today we are going to look at how we can live on a daily basis with the Word. You see, it's so critical to understand that, that the Word of God is like bread to us as believers. Uh, it's like something that we can eat and find sustenance from. Therefore, it is a daily experience. Jesus prayed, give us our daily bread. And then in Matthew, teaches us that the Word of God is bread. And uh, therefore, it's critical for you as a believer to understand the role that the Word should play in your life. And how can you on a daily basis live with the Word? You see, the Word of God needs to be one of the priorities in our lives. I want to refer you to a passage of Scripture where uh, Jesus actually is en route somewhere and he, he stops at a lady's house. And there's a specific scene that outplays itself that we refer to today in Luke 10, verse 38 to verse 42. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister, Mary, who sat at the Lord's Feet. It's an archaic way of saying she was being taught by Jesus. To what he said, but Martha was, was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? You tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, Jesus answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are really needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen, strong term, Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. What an incredible piece of scripture. We see Martha in, in the desire to be known as a good host. Was running around and trying to do the best things and the most things and trying to impress people. And then Jesus actually refers to a choice that has been made. So obviously there was in... in in Mary's mind, somewhere, the option, should I engage with household activities or should I sit at the Lord's feet? And she was presented an opportunity to choose something and she chose to live with the Word. And I want this morning to challenge you to be somebody that when you weigh up your priorities, that you will constantly make sure that the choice you make will reflect a value system that prioritizes God's word in your life. Because there are so many distractions. There are so many cheap ways of engaging with this world. And if you don't prioritize time with the word, you won't live with the word. You see, in this life, if we really want to be wise and effective, uh, there, there's two ways that we can acquire wisdom. The one way that you can acquire wisdom is by learning from your own experiences, is to be a person that's reflective and you experiment with opportunities and then after that experiment has gone by, you sit back and you sit and reflect about that experience and then you learn your lessons from that experience. The other way is, you can learn from others' experiences. You can be reflective in that sense that you, you keep your eyes fixed on whatever somebody else is doing and you learn from their experience. Now, this camera that I'm looking into is not 
symmetrical in the way that it exposes my face. The reason for that is my face is not symmetrical. If I turn my face a bit this side, the left side, and a bit to the right side, you'll see that I've got a curvature on my nose. That is what you call learning from experience. When I started to play sports, I was nominated to be a flanker. And uh, my, my coach said to me, the role of the flank is to go and get the ball out of the ruck and the mall and present the ball to the back line. I saw a ruck being formed and I ran uh, towards that ruck and in, the, in the, uh, and the desire to see where the ball is at and how I should disengage the ball from the ruck. I ran straight up with my face flat out into somebody else's head and I broke my nose. Uh, the point of my nose was sitting on my cheek and my, my coach came and he took my head in his hands and he, he kind of, in a sense, just repositioned my nose and said, all right, you're off, try again. Now you've learned something. It was an expensive lesson. I was at that stage about eight or nine years old and when I was about 12 or 13 years old and I started to engage with a, with a female in my classroom, I realized that I've got a problem, I've got a uh, asymmetrical face because of lessons learned. Now you can laugh at me today, but there's many asymmetrical areas in your life because of the way that you are learning. And therefore, it's critical for you to choose the right way of learning. You can never live long enough to learn all of the lessons you need to learn in order to be an effective, successful person. There's not enough time given to you as a human being. You need to be able to look at many people's lives and look within their lives and see how they have learned lessons. And from those lessons, you can take what those lessons are and turn them into a word for yourself and live with that lesson every single day of your life. And that's what I mean by living with the word, living with God's wisdom and God's insight in your life. You don't have to learn everything you need to learn by your own mistakes. And therefore, we need the scripture. It's, it's, it's amazing that when my little son started to play rugby and I had the privilege of being part of the coaching squad, when they ch chose him to be a flanker, the first lesson I taught him was whenever you want to engage a ruck, don't run face flat on into someone else, the back of someone else's head because that hurts the nose. My son was clever. He learned from my mistakes. Uh, another thing that, that exposed this quite well was uh, I was in the unfortunate situation that my father passed away when I was still fairly young. But very fortunate in the sense that he was a man of the word. He was a man that loved the word. And one of the things that I inherited was his Bible. I remember in, in 2008, I went through a tremendous personal crisis where I had to regain direction in my life. And just in a sense, I had to to engage a very deep personal struggle. And I was so desperate, I thought, you know, I really, I really need to get a Bible that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to use this inherited Bible that I got from my dad. And I picked up this Bible and I started to page through it. And uh, it, it was in 2008 and I got to a specific piece of scripture that really just absolutely blessed me with wisdom and comfort. Old Bible being read 10 years ago with relevant wisdom for that day. And as I read that scripture and it consoled me and it gave me comfort and gave me wisdom and I regained my posture and my direction as I sat there in my quiet time just reminiscing about the wisdom of God, my eyes caught something that was scribbled right next to that scripture in my father's handwriting. And as I moved my focus from the specific piece of scripture towards the scribble in the margin of the Bible, I saw my name there. And I saw how my dad wrote there a promise to my son, 1998. I was blown away by the fact that 10 years before I needed that scripture, the Holy Spirit enlightened that specific verse as a prophetic promise over my life. 
in my dad's Bible. It was a means as I received this wisdom in 2008. It has already been given 10 years before that. You see, God had a word for me, for my crisis, long before my crisis became a reality. And that's the way the scriptures teach us. In Romans chapter 15 verse 4 it says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we may have hope. Now, I don't know what steals the hope in your daily life, but let me tell you, the scriptures are given to us by God to teach us, to give us access to knowledge as to how to engage life's challenges so that we may again live with hope. That's how we live with the Bible. The Bible is that, that piece of scripture that God gave us long before we even were born on earth to give us hope. Long before you've had the challenges that you are facing now, God had a word over your life and the essence of that word is you are in Christ. And in Christ you can do all things because he strengthens you. He had a word over your life long before your life existed. And what a discovery to realize that my life was created with intent, with purpose. There's no need for me to go and look for purpose. I can only visit the scriptures and, and see God's purpose for my life revealed. The psalm writer in Psalm 119 says the following, Oh, how I love all you have revealed. I reverently Ponder it all the day long. Your commands give me an edge on my enemies. They never become obsolete. I've even become smarter than my teachers since I've pondered and absorbed your counsel. I've become wiser than the wise old sages simply by doing what you tell me. What a statement. That you can acquire wisdom just by reading the Bible. I watch my step, avoiding the ditches and ruts of evil, so I can spend all my time keeping your word. Why don't you spend more time living with the word? You see, there's basically two ways that you can approach your future as a believer. Firstly, you can live by default. And that means that you, you see your life as a series of experiments that might go right or might go wrong. But if you do that, you are a very unwise person. Because living by default might get you to a place where you don't want to end up. They say if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So it's critical for you to understand that, that God has a very specific word for your life, a purpose for your life. And do not spend your time on earth just living by default. You can, in a sense, live your life by the design God had for your life. And the Bible is like the blueprint of His design for your life. You see, the, the Bible, in a sense, is a revelation of Jesus Christ all of the Bible should be read through what Christ has done and who he is. And then secondly, the Bible should be read through the perception that you are in Christ. And when you read the Bible from the eyes and the perception of what Christ has done on the cross and the resurrection for us, suddenly it becomes a tapestry of God's amazing, amazing wisdom for your life. I remember uh, how my big brother, my older brother, got a bicycle. It was one piece of glory. It was called a Western Flyer, a 10-speed Western Flyer bicycle. Now, up until that stage, I only had a, a tricycle that I could ride. 
and I remember how my brother got into his bicycle and he would he would parade up and down the street with his bicycle. I was absolutely in love with his gift. And one day when he went to school, I stayed behind and I thought, this is my day. Today, I am going to get onto that bicycle and I am going to ride that bike. I got on that bike, we stayed in a bit of a downhill and it was actually quite easy to ride this 10 speed bicycle because I could figure out the balance. But there's one, one specific part of that, that bicycle's capacity that I was not prepared for. I was not prepared for the speed of a 10 speed racing bike. I was used at living at tricycle pace. And suddenly I went in ra racing bike pace. Well, the problem is at the end of the road there was a T-junction and I could not figure out how do you break this fast thing. I went with his bicycle straight into the bushes, crashed the bike, got scratched all over, got hurt because I could not understand that in the design of that bicycle there could also be danger and if I don't engage it in the right way the possible speed of that bike might become a danger. What is supposed to be something that is a phenomenal blessing can actually threaten my life. And therefore, I, I needed to, to actually be coached and understand the design what I've been given to play with. And it's the same with your life. Your life has been given to you with a specific design in mind. And God wants you to understand that. A few years ago, a friend of mine blessed me with with going out on a uh, racing track to go and drive sports cars just to see how much we can get out of them. Uh, but before we did that, before we went live on the sports track, we went into a race car simulator. And in that simulator, I was trained, I was taught by an, a, a professional driving coach how to engage the apexes, when to, to, to put pedal to the metal, when to engage the brake system, and that safeguard me from severe injury, but also huge financial losses. But they designed a simulator whereby I could practice and prepare myself in order to be able to engage reality. And it's the same when we spend time with the Word. We are placed into God's simulator and He is preparing us for whatever is awaiting us. You see, you don't know what's happening within 10 minutes of your life. Much less what will happen tomorrow or in 10 years. You can only plan. But here's the amazing thing. God's Spirit knows what awaits you. And when you spend time with the Word, He starts to prepare and to design your skills in order to be able to fulfill your calling. So it's critical for you. To understand that spending time with the Word is God's simulation room where He prepares you for the daily realities you have to face. So how are you doing with the Word? Listen to what 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 and 17 says. It says, there's nothing like the written Word of God for showing the way of salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or the other, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the tasks that God has for us. That's amazing. So the word becomes, becomes my simulating instrument by which God prepares and trains me so that I could live with the word daily. John 14, 26 says, But the counsel of the Holy Spirit, the Father will send him in my name. He will teach you all the things and remind you of everything I have told you. You see, the Holy Spirit works in your life. By way of the word that's within your spirit. And therefore, fill your heart and your mind with the word. And then you've got lots of tools the spirit of God can use in your day-to-day -day reality. And he will remind you in situations of what scripture says. And thus, he creates within you 
a capable and successful expression of who Jesus Christ is when man is in him. So how do you go about that? Just going to give you five quick, easy ways to engage with the word. Firstly, get an understandable translation. Make sure that the Bible you read is one you can understand. Secondly, get a pen. Because you would want to circle or underline and mark everything that, that would stand out of the scripture and that would be revealed to you or focused for you by the Spirit. And you make sure that you, you, you mark that, either circle or to underline it. Make sure that you engage with the Word in that way. And then you take a journal, thirdly, and you write down whatever scripture God has revealed to you or highlighted for you. And then you... You extract from that scripture the lesson, the wisdom, the guidance that you receive from that scripture. But also you should have with you your diary. Because every time that you would go and sit down and want to read the Bible and fill your journal with revelation, the devil is not slothful. He'll start to remind you of everything you still need to do. And then you can just write down in your diary, in your to-do list, what needs to be done. Listen, after the fifth or the sixth time that he's, he's given you tips on what's still awaiting you, you can just relax because he will take off and leave you. Because every time he gives you something and reminds you of something that wants to interject with your quiet time in the word, actually he's helping you to engage that thing that's bothering your mind to be enlightened by the word of God that you're spending your time with now. So have your diary, have your pen, have your Bible, have your journal, and then get a good reading plan. And we as Doxadaya, we have lots of reading plans. We've got the 440 journals. We've got so many helpful mechanisms that can help you read through the Bible through specific topics or specific passages of the Bible that can help you tremendously in establishing a life where you are living with the Word. Well, in John... Jesus prays for his disciples that their minds might be opened so that they might understand the word. And I'm going to pray that for you now. Let's close our eyes. Lord, thank you that you open the minds of everyone viewing this, that they may understand your word. Amen.